An explosive day in New South Wales politics today with the still very popular former Premier Gladys Berejiklian accused by the ICAC corruption body of serious corrupt conduct. Her conduct. Her then lover, Daryl Maguire, as we know, was also cited for serious corrupt conduct. The ICAC has been widely criticised for the length of time this all took to investigate. The corruption uh, investigation took years, and the investigation caused the former Premier, of course, to step down from her office, where she had personally handled the toughest time most Sydney siders had ever known. We had two years of COVID, we had bushfires, we had lockdowns. A job most people believe, and they still do today, that she did brilliantly. She's had this to say today, quote, and we've waited all day for this statement, serving the people of New South Wales was an honour and a privilege. At all times, I have worked my hardest in the public interest. Nothing in this report demonstrates otherwise. Thank you to members of the public for their incredible support. This will sustain me always. The report is currently being examined by my legal team. That was Gladys Berejikli. And now, I'm a fan of Gladys and having lived under her regime and then that of Labor's Daniel Andrews, I can tell you without fear of contradiction, New South Wales was very lucky to have her. And as Labor veteran Graham Richardson told Sky today, the Labor Party were never certain they could ever beat her at an election. We had no thought of defeating her uh, for years because, uh, you know, we knew how popular she was. And that popular popularity uh, just endured. Now, phone taps were pivotal in Gladys's downfall. Her lover, Maguire's phone, was being tapped by ICAC. This exchange, in my view, probably sunk the Premier. You know my little friend? Not really. Don't worry. I do. I don't need to know. Who's your, which little friend are you talking about? Mm. I don't need to know about that bit. I've been subpoenaed to go to ICAC, some of the ICACs. So that's exciting. <laughs> what? Yeah. I think that her, what was to benefit from the skullduggery was getting up to don't, don't the council. I don't, I don't want to know any of that stuff. They could probably actually listen to any calls that were being made between me and this phone and any individual that I choose to talk to, including you. Is that going to be a problem? That's extraordinary audio by any means. Now, current New South Wales Premier Chris Minns was effusive in his praise of Gladys Berejiklian's handling of COVID today. Here's what he had to say. Nothing in this report takes away, I don't think, from uh, Premier Berejiklian's handling of the COVID emergency, which I still regard as being excellent. Uh, it's important, however, for all politicians in New South Wales and anyone in public life or positions of leadership to understand that we must manage conflicts of interest. Sky News senior reporter Carolyn Marcus has been doing an outstanding job live on this story right through the day. Caroline joins me now. Caroline, given those phone taps, was there really too much surprise today of the, the, the ultimate finding of ICAC against Gladys Berejiklian, do you think? Well, look, they certainly sounded incriminating, didn't they, Steve? But yet the ICAC itself took a long 18 months be between the time that we heard those phone taps and the end of the hearings to hand down these findings today. So clearly its decision wasn't made lightly. It's taken a long time to go through all the evidence and the submissions and come to this finding in the end, uh, making uh, findings of serious corruption uh, uh, in terms of both the formal of Premier Gladys Berejiklian and her former boyfriend, Daryl Maguire. But we do have to remember this is not a criminal court. And it is very interesting that while they did make these findings of corruption against Ms Berejiklian, they did not recommend that the matter be referred to the Director of Public Prosecutions. I spoke with uh, Barrister Margaret Kaneen a short while ago, and she made the point that this puts Ms Berejiklian in this awful halfway house. She's got these terrible corruption findings hanging over her, which would uh, bring disgrace to any former political leader, anyone in, in the world of politics or business. And yet she is not going to be able to face a court in order to challenge them. Now, she may have some recourse legally. She has said in that statement that you read out she is having her legal team have a look closely at these findings, but it remains to be seen whether they will continue to hang over her or whether she will be able to challenge them. 
Caroline, one of the only things we all have is our, our character and our reputations. I mean, and we need to all of us protect those, those character and reputations that we have. Being called corrupt is something that no one's character can easily handle. How do you think that Gladys Berejiklian would be personally feeling today? We've seen the legal uh, response that, that has been issued, but you know her well. I know her very well. I, I know her on a first-name basis. How do you think she'd be handling this? I think she would really be struggling in light of these findings. I mean, I think it will bring little comfort that there won't, she won't be facing criminal charges over them. In fact, uh, she... she might be uh, disappointed about that. She hasn't made that clear in her statement because it may give her, give her less recourse for a, a legal challenge. But I think she will, knowing uh, that she was, she prided herself on being a woman of integrity and being uh, the state's first female premier, um, that she would really be taking it hard today. Caroline, a fantastic job on the road today. Uh, I, I know it's been tough out there in the cold, one of Sydney's coldest days of the year. Uh, but well done, and thanks for helping us out tonight. Thanks, Steve.